In the midst of the turbulent late 18th century on a small island in the Mediterranean, a child was born who would forever change the course of history. Where did he start it? His youth in Corsica and his eventual rise to power. We're going back in time to explore the birth of one of history's most iconic figures, Napoleon Bonaparte. In 1767, the Republic of Genora, exhausted by decades of conflict, made a fateful decision. It sold Corsica to France. France, eager to strengthen its Mediterranean presence, following its defeat in the Seven Years' War, saw this as an opportunity to expand its influence in the region. Sporadic uprisings and acts of resistance, including guerrilla warfare against the French. Corsican forces, led by Pascal Paoli, resisted the French, but the Battle of Ponte Novio in 1768 resulted in a French victory, marking the beginning of their control over the island. Efforts to regain independence were largely unsuccessful. Corsica remained under French control. In the coastal town of Ajaccio, Corsica, Letizia Bonaparte gave birth to her second child, Napoleon. His father is Carlo Bonaparte, a lawyer deeply committed to Corsican independence eventually aligned himself with the opposing side when the French fully occupied the territory. Growing up, Napoleon grappled with dual allegiances, his Corsican heritage and their fight for their liberty. However, Napoleon harbored significant resentment toward his father due to his father's decision to support the French over Corsican independence. Carlo Bonaparte made the difficult decision to align with the French authorities. This shift in allegiance deeply strained the fatherson relationship. Napoleon, who had inherited his father's strong Corsican identity and aspirations, viewed this decision as a betrayal of Corsican independence. As the island came under French control, Carlo gradually ascended to the position of Corsica's representative at the court of Louis XVI. While forging ties with the newly appointed French authorities in Corsica, he arranged for his children to receive education in France. In April 1779, Napoleon enrolled in the military academy at Brienne. Napoleon's arrival at the academy marked him as an outsider from the start. His Corsican heritage set him apart, making him the others among the privileged. One significant barrier was language. With his Corsican background made him stand out. Napoleon cannot speak French, and with his outstanding Corsican accent, creating a divide that left him isolated. While many of his classmates came from aristocratic families, he hailed from a more modest background. But his seriousness and pragmatic behavior tormented his teachers. Letizia Bonaparte, Napoleon's mother, played a significant role in his upbringing by instilling values, providing guidance, and fostering his intellectual and personal development cultivated a sense of simplicity and frugality in her household. The family's modest circumstances meant that young Napoleon learned the value of resourcefulness and humility. This upbringing helped him adapt to difficult situations later in life, especially during his military campaigns, reinforcing Napoleon's Corsican identity, fostering in him a deep attachment to his homeland and its history. Her influence was instrumental in binding Napoleon to the Corsican way of life. In many ways, Letizia's nurturing and teachings were fundamental in shaping Napoleon into the formidable figure he would become. He began attending the École Militaire in Paris in October 1784. During his time there, Napoleon received a formal military education and training, which included subjects such as artillery, mathematics and strategy. Napoleon Bonaparte's choice to become an artillery officer was influenced by a combination of his personal circumstances the hierarchical society and a highly aristocratic structure of connections during that time. Being an artillery officer required wide strategic mindset. Science and knowing everything means was in a lower class. However, the French Revolution, with its emphasis on meritocracy and the dissolution of aristocratic privileges, created opportunities for individuals from various social backgrounds to advance based on their abilities.
a storm of social, political and ideological forces converged in the heart of Europe. It was a time when the cries for liberty, equality and fraternity reverberated through the cobblestone streets of Paris. The French Revolution, the abolition of elites or aristocracy, the monarchy's financial mismanagement had led to a severe economic crisis with the common people heavily taxed to sustain the extravagant lifestyles of the aristocracy. Through a series of revolutionary decrees, feudalism was abolished, church lands were confiscated and redistributed and noble titles were annulled. While the French Revolution was on turmoil, Napoleon saw this an opportunity to return to Corsica and seek a position in Corsican politics. At the age of 23, Bonaparte left the French army and returned to Corsica as an enthusiastic revolutionary. Corsica had become part of France under the French Republic, granting Corsicans full French citizenship rights. As a lieutenant in the island's National Guard, Bonaparte actively engaged in Corsican politics. He swiftly emerged as the leader of a faction that opposed the island's governor, Pasquale Paoli. The Corsican patriot viewed Bonaparte as traitor, overly ambitious, self-centered and too aligned with France. Napoleon identified with the republican and revolutionary ideals of the Jacobins he aligned himself with the Jacobin faction in Corsica. He was drawn to the republican ideals of the French Revolution, which included liberty, equality and fraternity. The Jacobins were champions of these ideals, advocating for a more egalitarian and democratic society. Napoleon, even from his early days as a young officer, believed in the transformative potential of these principles. He was ambitious and sought to rise through the ranks of the military. Aligning with the Jacobins allowed him to demonstrate his commitment to revolutionary ideals and gain recognition and promotions within the revolutionary army. With his failed return in Corsica, Napoleon returned to France with more hard-skinned, tougher, cruel and embroiling with ambitions and determination to have a power. Upon returning, he wrote an account about supporting the radical Republican, being a pro-Jacobin. He wrote letters to Jacobin leaders, expressing his support for their cause and offering his services. These letters ultimately led to his appointment as an artillery commander in the French Revolutionary Army at the Siege of Toulon. Toulon was a strategically important French naval base. However, as the revolution radicalized, the city became a stronghold of royalist and counter-revolutionary forces, including French émigrés and British naval support. Toulon has been a crucial naval base for the French Navy for centuries. Its sheltered harbour and deep waters made it an ideal location for the construction, maintenance and deployment of naval fleets. The Siege of Toulon was more than just a military campaign. It was here that Napoleon honed his craft, showcased his innovative tactics and captured the attention of those who would shape the destiny of France. Come along with us in our upcoming episode as we explore the early breakthroughs in Napoleon's career during the Siege of Toulon. In the episodes that follow, we'll witness Napoleon's victorious campaigns throughout Europe, the creation of the Napoleonic Code and his coronation as Emperor of the French. Thanks for looking back. 